they only took it on the weekend. They would get away with not having any bladder symptoms. But what was interesting for me, I found anecdotally, clinically, that the females seem to develop symptoms much earlier. They seem to be less tolerant um, of the drug and, and their problems would emerge a bit quicker than some of the males. I think that was reflected slightly in the research as well. Um, so in, in terms of how they presented clinically, we've already said that they were very end stage. They weren't coming in the early days, really. They'd been suffering with these urinary, lower urinary tract symptoms for a long time before they came to see me for advice. So their symptoms ranged from burning when they passed urine, um, which we call dysuria or, or pain, um, the frequency that I've mentioned, the urgency, the incontinence, it would then vary and and become almost like a difficulty emptying their bladder. They would say that they really wanted to go, but then they couldn't empty their bladder properly. They described bleeding from minor to moderate to very significant bleeding, passing thick blood and clots in their urine. Some of them even described passing lumps of tissue um, in their urine. Um, some of them presented with genital pain. So for the females, it would be vaginal pain and swelling and pain during sexual intercourse. And some of the males described swelling, pain in the penis and, and just general discomfort. Um, I think the worst thing that bothered them, well, there were two really, I guess the frequency could be so bad the need to pass urine every five minutes meant that they could not leave the toilet. And some of them would spend their time curled up around the toilet in the bathroom for hours, almost like chained to the toilet. They had no life at all.